Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Chandrika and this is Rika Life. Okay, so get settled in. Today is another whip and yarn chat and I'm going to be working on a whip. So grab your whip, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, some water, your drink of choice and settle in. We're going to have lots of fun together today. All right, so you may have noticed I am wearing a wearable. I'm actually wearing a crochet poncho that I made. That's what it looks like. And I'll just show it to you. So that is what it looks like. And it is a granny square poncho or granny cluster poncho. I don't know what they call it. Um, it's been a couple of years since I made it. So I do not remember the pattern, but in case I have put it on Ravelry, I will check if it's on Ravelry, if it's on my Ravelry projects page, I'll, um, you can see that down below in the description box, but yeah, I made this. This is with, um, Karen Simply Soft and Sunshine and yeah, I just decided to wear it. So I'm going to tell you what I'm working on today. I am working on another wearable. So I finally finished the hexagon cardigans for my daughter's teachers. I made two for her and one for a friend. So I've made five hexagon cardigans and now I'm making my own. Finally, <laughs> I say my own, but I'm not sure. I feel like I might even, I might sell it. So let's see what happens. But this is um, one side and this is nine rounds. So that's one half and then I'm working. So I did up to nine on both. And then now I'm continuing with the second panel. So um, for the uh, hexagon cardigans I made for my daughter's teachers, I actually did 15 rounds of the granny clusters before I joined them and then um, did more work on it. So um, my plan right now is to at least get to 15 and then... Um, get to 15 and then I will, you know, again, put it together and see if it fits or not. This is um, a DK weight and the yarn I had used for her teachers were Line Brand Mandala Ombre. And I think that's classified as a four weight. So I might need to put a couple more rounds on here. I'm thinking maybe go up to 17, 18 rounds. It could be even more. I'm not sure. So I am, let's see how many rounds I'm at on this one. I'm on round 11, so we'll see how far I go. And sorry, I didn't share with you the yarn I'm using. This is the Lion Brand Mandala Bonus Bundle in the color Giant. So it's like a really beautiful rainbowy gradient. Um, and on one of them, I'm still in yellows. And the second one, I've already started. It's already in the orange color. So I am enjoying these colors. They're so vibrant. And I really wanted a hexagon cardigan for myself. I mean, I made five as gifts. And I was like, I think it's time to make one for myself. So I uh, got down from 16 whips to three whips and now I've started like four or five new projects. Um, one of them is a new car project. One of them is this. One of them is a moss stitch shawl. Um, one of them is another jelly bean blanket. So the moss stitch shawl and the jelly bean blanket were two that were on my whip list and I finished them too. And then I started new ones of them because I love those patterns so much. Um, I'm going to share those with you probably in another video. But I absolutely love those two patterns. I loved the rhythm of them. Oh my God, the jelly bean blanket. So the new one and the one I just finished, I made with Line Brand Ice Cream Yarn. And the ice cream yarn is just a dream to work with. I love it. So it is an, a light three weight. It's a number three. So it feels very similar to what I'm working with right now. Um, 
but it just that jelly bean blanket I don't know what it is about that I I had put it away um it was in my car whips bag and I didn't work on it for months and then I pulled it out and I was like okay let's work on it so I didn't have to watch the video I just picked up my project and I was able to figure out where I was I might have checked the video for like a minute or two of it um and then I continued working on that project and I don't know what it is about that I don't know if it was the yarn or the pattern it brought me so much peace it felt so so relaxing and I can't say that about every crochet project because some of them require more um more attention more time more focus but that pattern it was just such a joy to work on I, I don't even know how to describe it in words it was so super relaxing and it just felt like luxurious so as soon as I finished it I realized the sides were not straight and I was okay with that so I'm not planning to gift that blanket but I um you know I may be able to donate it if I can kind of if I can kind of fix up the edges a bit or maybe make a border on it, something. Um, but then I was like, hey, let's start another one. So I started another jelly bean blanket. So I'm on my second jelly bean blanket. Um, check out that pattern. It's just called like jelly bean blanket and it's done with ice cream yarn. Um, the only thing that's different with what I did than what's in the pattern in the video, um, the designer intended on it being made um you create it sideways but then she flips the whole thing and it then she counts it going this way so um i when i first made so i actually did try that pattern before and i chained the amount almost the amount that she suggested I realized that was too big and I didn't have enough yarn to finish it. So I ended up making that into a scarf because it was very long. Now this time when I did my pattern, when I used her pattern, I didn't make as many chains. I just did what I usually do, which is I chain and then I hold it and then I'm like, okay, this is a decent baby size blanket. And then I stop there and then I'll continue on to the second row. So that's worked really well for me so far I haven't had any problems using that method um and I would definitely recommend that so I know a lot of you might be going with very specific dimensions for for the baby blankets or the lap gowns that you're making especially if they're for charity and donations um but for me when I'm making a baby blanket I kind of just eyeball it um and I have had the case, you know, I've had the case where I've made it too wide and then I can't get that length because I don't have enough yarn. <laughs> so I'm kind of learning from my mistakes. Um, but yeah, that jelly bean blanket was just amazing. And now I've started it again. This time I'm using ice cream yarn in the color, um, I think it's called Raspberry Ripple. And it has like blues and pinks and purples. And again, it's just turning out so beautiful. So I'm keeping that as, um, you know, a whip that I will work on in between other projects. So, you know, maybe on the weekend when I'm with family or when I kind of need some downtime in between other projects. So I'm kind of savoring that even though I've just started it, but I'm kind of like, it's so peaceful to me and the other project that's very similar to that is the moss stitch shawl that I'm making so I just finished one and then I again started a new one um and that one is with line brand mandala yarn it's mandala baby in the color Arendelle so it has mostly pinks and a little bit of blue um that shawl too is just so relaxing and um I I've been loving working on it. So those are like two really, um, you know, we call them mindless projects. But I'd say with those, like I do have to pay attention because I have to know where the stitches are going. 
um, with something like what I'm doing right now. I was actually practicing doing this um, when my kids were gone for one of their classes. So I was sitting there and I was able to watch them and I was still crocheting. Um, I was working on my car project, which is a big twist twinkle in a yellow color. I'm making a block stitch blanket. So that also, just like this, has double crochets. So I was able to just work on that and not have to keep staring at my work. So I'm going to try to do that today as well, but I don't want to make any mistakes, especially on a hexi cardi. So I might be looking at my work today, even though I'm trying to practice and teach myself how to at least do granny clusters without looking at my work. Okay, we just started the pink color now. This is getting really pretty. Oh my gosh. Oh, I might have to keep this for myself. And I say that because I love the color yellow. And this color of this line brand, Mandala Bonus Bundle in Giant, is like so happy. It's like this vibrant, rainbowish feel to it. And um, it's making me so happy. That's why I decided to wear my poncho today because I was like, I want this to be a very happy and uplifting video. So I intend to spend this time with all of you and work on my project and make some progress on it. And I'm really, really blessed and I'm very grateful that I get to have this time now where I can make these videos and I can spend this time on my craft. Um, I just celebrated my one year YouTube anniversary last week and oh my gosh, it's just, it's an amazing feeling. Like who knew that a year has already gone by? I honestly, it's felt like a few months, but I have over 120 videos and you know, um, I have my tutorials and I'm working on other, pro other designs behind the scenes. So there's lots happening and I'm just so so grateful, so thankful, so blessed. And I mean, you get to play with yarn. It's like the most fun time of the day, right? So it's so funny. I um, put my kids to bed the other night and then it was my bedtime, but I had kind of dozed off with them. So when I finally came out of their rooms, I was like, mommy needs some crochet time. So I didn't even turn on an overhead light. I just had light coming from the side somewhere and I sat down and I picked this up and I was like hey it's yellow I don't need to work hard to see my stitches and I just picked it up and I did a couple rounds and it felt so good it's so relaxing to me I just love it I love it so much so yeah one year anniversary and um I I really appreciate all of you watching and commenting I now have people who comment on most of my videos and um, I try to stay active uh, with my community posts. I try to post something every day just sharing you know some behind the scenes content and just showing you what's happening in my life. So um, as of the recording of this video I have just donated I think I donated six to eight baby blankets and 20 baby hats to the NICU so that just got donated um, they loved it and I'm just sending sweet hugs to all those babies that you know will be using those blankets all those blankets are made with so much love so much care and so much prayer and blessing you know for all those babies that um, that are there in the hospital so that is done that was my donation for April of 2024. That was my, I think that was my second donation of the year. And then um, I am now, so I have, uh, I have shawls and scarves for the cancer patients. And now I'm working on making some hats or beanies for the cancer patients. So I have two hats. I want to have at least 10 to 12 hats. Um, I just came across a pattern for a men's hat, which is supposed to be 
it's with a bulky yarn, but it's supposed to be like kind of like for a large men's head. So I'm trying to make it with a worsted weight yarn. It's turning out like very big. I don't even know if it'll if it can fit anyone. It just feels huge. And I'm not even using the bulky yarn that they suggested. So I might just have to frog that whole thing. And I was trying to make that with the Premier Basics mosaic yarn. I don't remember the color name, but um, I was trying it with that mosaic yarn and uh, I don't know. It's like a really nice rainbowy color, not like this, but like a deep dark color rainbow. And um, I do like the yarn, but I might need to frog that hat, which is okay. I was just trying, trying it out today and trying to see if I could make it work. But I don't think it's working out the way I would like it to. Um, so in my, not this first bin, but the bin below, I have kept cotton yarn and then I've kept bulky yarn. And most of that bulky yarn I either got from Hirschner's, their mill ends, or I bought um, on sale or clearance at Joann's. So I don't know. It's like it's April. It's kind of like spring in some places. Um, for sure here in Texas, it's been quite warm. But the whole point is that um, to giving it to the cancer patients is so that they can use it while they're in the hospital because it's freezing in the hospital. So I might end up making those bulky hats instead of trying with worsted weight. Um, I also took out some three weight yarn. So I took out two mandalas um, that I had and I was thinking of making the divine hat. I love the divine hat pattern. I just made one, finished one yesterday it's so soothing. It kind of feels like a granny cluster, like a granny stitch to me. And I've probably made that divine hat pattern like, I don't know, 50 times already. So pretty much once I get going, I know exactly what I have to do. And, uh, and I love that pattern. Um, I can't remember the person's name who made it, but there is a video tutorial for it as well on YouTube. But the original designer um, is someone else. So that's a really beautiful hat pattern, especially with a yarn. So that works really well with a single colored yarn. So you can see the, um, the front posts. It also works really well with like a variegated yarn because then you can see the color changing throughout. So the only yarn I would say that not to use it with is some yarn that's like very busy or that the color is constantly changing because then you won't see any of that stitch definition of the actual pattern. So yeah, um, I'm making that hat and actually when I made my dreamy beanie hat, I had also made a pattern for chunky hats, um, which I used myself for donations. So I might use that again. I have that written down in my um, notebook. So I might use that again, especially if I'm using the bulky weight yarn, um, which is like right now, right now I'm using like three weights and worsted weights. So when I do the bulky weight yarn, that's kind of when I feel the difference in my hands. Um, I would say that using these three and four weights and not using very big hooks, um, your hands get used to it. But then when you switch over to doing a bulky weight yarn and using a bigger hook, then your hands have to adjust to that as well. So not to say that I can only work on one thing at a time, because that's just, that's not going to happen. I always bounce between projects, but I just try to be more mindful that, okay, for like this part of the day or for this crochet session, I'm only going to use this type of hook and this type of yarn. And then the next time I'll use something else. So I try not to like go between a bulky weight and a three weight in the same sitting because then I find my hands get really um, just confused and that tension is not there. And then, you know, and then your hands can start to hurt and stuff. So I try to avoid that as much as I can. Um, I know I should be doing stretches and all, which I'm very guilty of not doing. But I try to still get up and walk around and everything. 
but I mean more so in terms of like the wrist stretches and the hand stretches and the arm stretches just so that, you know, or the shoulder stretches so that I'm, you know, more flexible and so that the crocheting is not affecting my posture or affecting um, my hands. But yeah, um, I did want to make that tutorial for my chunky beanie. So let's see, maybe that's something I can work on. Though I know that now it's spring and so people will be making very lightweight things, but it doesn't hurt. I'll try to test out my own pattern and see if it's working. And if it is, then I might consider making a tutorial for that. Let me know in the comments if that's something that interests you or if you'd just like to see lightweight things for the spring and summer. Um, I feel like making things for donations you can kind of get away with using those bulky yarns because it's to keep someone warm so um yeah let me know what you think about that and i'm loving this pink color this yarn cake is so pretty oh i can't believe i've had it sitting in my yarn closet for like months and I just now have pulled it out. It's making me so happy. Such beautiful colors. Yeah, I'll show you how I'm doing so far. I stopped counting, but that's what it's looking like so far. I have the yellow, two shades of yellow, orange, and pink now. I'm just going to quickly pause and just count. Because I don't want to go too far above 15 without measuring. Let me just see. I'm at round 12, so... It, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, yarning. I was going to say yarning. Crocheting takes time. I'm only on round 12. It takes time. But it's all fun. I saw a video on Instagram um, where someone showed them crocheting and said that before they started crocheting, there was all this noise in their mind. And as soon as they started crocheting, it just became quiet and I was like yes that is what happens to my brain my brain just like calms way down and just everything slows down and it's like I'm making each stitch and it's just an incredible feeling you know to be able to gift something donate something sell something that you have made with your hands is an absolute pleasure. I mean, what greater thing could there be? You know, what whatever craft that is, whether it's crocheting or something else, but to be able to say that you handmade something and it was your creation, because, you know, sure, we're following patterns. Sure, we're following tutorials, but you are the one making it. It's not that person making it. You are the one who chose the colors. You are the one who chose the hook size. You chose where to change colors or not. And you put the finishing touches. You weaved in the ends. It's like that baby is yours. You know, that's your creation. And it's just so beautiful to me. I love being able to make beautiful things with my hands. And I love being able to move my hands like this. It makes me so relaxed, as I've mentioned many, many times. But I think being an artist, being a creative, being a crafter is just, it's like a privilege, you know, the, that we get to spend this time and do something we love. We have a roof over our head. We have so much to be thankful for. And I'm like, I'm so thankful. Um, I just saw a live with Ginger over at Yarn Geek. She came live and um, she was showing us she has moved all of her yarn, majority of her yarn, into like a studio. So she got a studio space. She's been putting up shelving and crates and starting to organize her things. And she still has like a hundred garbage bags full of yarn to organize. But just seeing the sheer amount of yarn that she has, it just made me like that's like what I think of as like yarn hoarding you know it's like a lot of yarn like over 100 bags that she has yet to open and she's opened already so much of it um that just felt 
to me a little bit intimidating like that's too much yarn I can't deal with that so I know I stopped my yarn ban and I have started buying yarn again but just watching her video and she, seeing the sheer volume of yarn that she has just made me kind of stop in my tracks and I was like wait 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 I don't want things to get out of control you know I'm already I've already gone from using the space in this room to using a linen closet as my yarn closet and I don't want to expand any further than that you know I want to use what I have I'm buying my yarn to use my yarn so I'd like to put it to use and so I I don't need any more yarn right now you know I had bought um excuse me I had bought a big twist carousel yarn from Joanne in the color pomegranate and I have yet to work with it but I went online to see do they have any other colors because it's on sale for $3.99 a ball down from $6.99 to $3.99 and I was like do they have any other colors do I want to buy more should I buy more of the color I already have what do I want to make with it but then after watching Ginger's video I was like oh my god no I don't want to just keep stocking up like when there is a need then I can find a sale and I can buy yarn. Until then, I don't need to just, you know, that's kind of what I did with the Hirschner's order. Like I, I knew I wanted the sweet swirls and the baby sparkle yarn. And so I kind of had it in my cart. And then I waited until they had um, a sale on their shipping. And so they had one cent shipping on April 1st. So I took advantage of that. And I basically I saved myself $15 in shipping. So that's what I did but uh, there's no end to yarns there's so many gorgeous beautiful yarns out there and um you know I haven't been doing any yarn reviews but if that is of interest to you let me know I can try and do that with the yarns that I already have but I definitely don't see myself as someone who's just going out to you know buy yarns just for the sake of it and to just keep adding to my stash like I, I can't see myself doing that it gives me it makes me feel very um what's the word like just thinking about it makes me feel like claustrophobic where I'm like oh too much yarn can't do it so that's why I'm really happy to be able to be using so there's like worsted weights in here and then underneath is the bulky yarn so if I can take out the bulky yarn and use up like 10 12 balls for the cancer patients that would make me so happy and I know that those mill ends, those bulky mill ends were on sale again at Hirschner's. It was down from like $8 to like $6 and I was tempted to buy more, but I didn't. So I kind of think I might be going on another yarn ban for a couple of months, at least until I've used up more of my stash. Um, I... Don't have any shows or anything coming up yet. I think right now I'm just, I don't know how to describe this, but I'm just in this phase where I would like to design a lot of things, but I don't know what yet. So until then, I'm just going to keep creating and keep making things and keep making videos and sharing my love of yarn with all of you. And I think that's fine, you know, as creatives, we go through these phases where we you know, I don't know, lose momentum or you lose that uh, spark and that's okay. You know, you need some downtime too. So this is kind of my downtime. So in my downtime where my mind is kind of, you know, I'm just kind of playing and I'm giving myself some space so that I can find that creativity again, find that spark again and get inspired again, you know, to design something and and it's okay you know doesn't mean you gotta pump out tutorials every week or anything like that I mean that's most certainly not gonna happen here I I don't have the bandwidth for that but I would like to keep continuing in my small little sustainable way and that's why you know even when I feel like there's more things I could share with you and there's more videos I could do I kind of tell myself that 
do you want to go up to more videos per week or is two good for you? And I always think two is good for me. Two is good for now. And so I stink, I, I stink, I stick to two videos per week. And in between, I try to post something every day and just stay in touch with all of you. And, you know, I'm crocheting every day. I'd say it's very rare that a day goes by that I don't crochet. Even if one day goes by, by the next day, I'm kind of like itching to crochet. I'm like, why didn't I sit and crochet yesterday? And sometimes I feel like that happens on the weekends where you get busy with family things. And of course, now going into the spring and summer, spending more time outdoors is what will happen. And, you know, then either you take a lightweight crochet project with you or you just keep something in the car. So now I just left my car projects bag in the car. There's no more taking it in and out. I just left it in the car. There's two hooks in there. There's two projects in there. And I'm like, that's it. Just anytime you have a spare moment or you're in the car for more than 10, 15 minutes, you can just take it out and work on a couple rows. And um, yeah, I feel like, you know, I don't know if that's anxiety talking or what it is, but just something about keeping my hands busy. I feel like when I'm in the car and I'm not driving, I like to keep my hands busy. I'd like to still have a conversation with people, still interact with the other people in the car, but you know, why can't I keep my hands busy? What's what's so wrong with it? It's you know, I'm not doing any harm to anyone. I'm just I'm just making something. So I feel like Sometimes people get, I won't say who, but sometimes people get, um, what's the word, overwhelmed that there's just like yarn everywhere in the house because, you know, it's in this room, it's by my couch, I have some in another room on another couch, so I kind of have like three dedicated spaces where my yarn is right now and um, some people in my home get overwhelmed and are like, oh my god, you're taking up all the space with your yarn. And for me, it's just like, well, do you want to see me like this, calm and collected? Or would you like to see something else? So I just, um, I just then move those things when they come and sit with me and make some space for them. But, you know, if I had it my way, my yarn would be all over the house and my project, project bags would be everywhere so that I don't have to keep getting up and walking to my yarn closet. So um, I, I, re I redid my, um, my yarn stuff and I redid my yarn closet and I put some project bags on the floor. So at the very bottom, I have three bags. One is for DK weight, one is for worsted weight and one is for anything above worsted weight. So I have like, two or three scrap projects going. Um, I think two of them I started, one of them I still have to do. So the light DK one, I wanted to do a continuous granny, or I think it might even be called a modern granny, I'm not sure. But it's basically where you're doing the granny stitch and then the next row is like a foundation row. And then you do the granny stitch all the way around and then the foundation row. So. It's a very closed um, item. There's no holes. It's very dense. So that's a pattern that I was looking at on YouTube. And I want to start that with my DK weight or my light number three weight yarn. So that I've already planned. Then my worsted weight yarn, I used some of it to do, um, what did I make? I made some hats for the babies, but the rest of it that I have, I'm going to use and I'm making a scrap corner to corner. So I'm either going to add it to the scrap corner to corner or I have a scrap um, granny, granny square that I'm making, just like a large granny square. So there's that. And then the uh, bulky weight and anything above a number four. My scrap project for that is I'm making a moss stitch in the square. So I already have it, um, you know, a decent size, but I'm keeping all of those scraps to just add on to that project. So 
I feel like this strategy is going to work out well for me because I have those scrap projects that will just keep going and I can just keep adding my scraps to it. Um, if it's anything that has like a lot of yarn left over, then I definitely won't add it into that like scrap pile. But if it's just like, you know, less than half of a skein or even a quarter of a skein, then yeah, I'll put it into that pile. So I have like three bags dedicated to each of those weights with the scrap projects in them. Um, I think some of them might even have hooks in them. So it might be time to go and get some more Susan Bates hooks because now I've started putting them in my project bags. So my actual little pouch with all my hooks has like very few now. Um, but yeah, that's not a problem. I can go to Joanne's and pick up... Uh, the ones with the ergonomic handles, with the black handles, those are my favorite, like this one, like what I'm using right now. Um, so yeah, I think those scrap projects like are going to go really well. And it means that I don't need to have yarn that's just languishing somewhere. I'll know exactly what the yarn is for. And, um, you know, and otherwise everything that's kind of out or displayed is full skeins. So like everything in here is generally full skeins of yarn. There's some um, big twist value that's like one has like half a skein, but I just left it in there. But otherwise I don't plan to find or have scraps like laying around. They have a place now and um, that way there's just less fuss, less mess and everything is organized just how I like it. I love everything to be organized. So it took me quite a while when I organized my yarn things. Um, it took me over two hours and I just kept going from one room to another and taking things out of my yarn closet and taking things out of this room. I donated some yarn that I really knew I am not going to use. Um, and I used my bed. I kind of like separated things out based on the weight, based on whether it was a cake or a skein. Um, it's funny, I have some, what is it called? I think it's called, oh yeah, it's called Color Fusion DK. So I have two balls of it in this color that's like oranges and blues. I don't know why I bought that color, but I don't like that color anymore. When I look at that colorway, it just, I'm not liking it. But I'm thinking I might just make some cancer hats with it. I think I can make two hats. So I think I'm just going to do that and donate it and call it a day. Like, it's just sitting there in this bin staring at me. And for some reason, those colors just don't make me feel so nice. It's a DK weight. It's a really nice yarn. I've made other hats with that yarn with a different colorway, but this colorway is, I, I don't know, it's just blue and orange together are not cutting it for me. So that's kind of sitting in that naughty corner, but I think I'm going to pull it out and just make two hats and donate it and hopefully someone else likes orange and blue together, just not me. I mean, heck, maybe somebody doesn't even like this yellow that I'm wearing right now, but I decided to wear it. So everyone likes different things and that is totally fine. All right, let's just stop and see how far I reached, if I even made any progress. I'm on the 13th row, look at that. <laughs> like almost 40 minutes in and I think I did like two rounds, so... It's taking a while, it's taking time, but it's really enjoyable. And this is a three weight, but I'm using an eye hook. So it recommends an H hook, I think. Yeah, it, it recommends an H five millimeter hook and I'm using an I 5.5 millimeter hook. And I think it's perfectly fine. I usually do go up a hook size, but it's, it's perfectly fine because if you can see, the stitches are, um, what do you say? They're, they're looking good. The tension on them is looking good. I feel like if I used an H hook, it would be very tight stitching. And I kind of wanted this to be more of a like relaxed garment. 
that has some, not stretch to it, but has some, you know, I don't know what I mean by that. But anyway, so I am going to do a couple more rounds and then I'm going to see if this is sufficient. Let me just see if I can fold it over right now and see what's happening. So, oh, it looks so nice. Okay, let me show it to you. Look at that. It looks so nice. I think I would hold it like this because that's the flat side. It's going to look really pretty. So I will tell you my plan for this cardigan. So <clears throat> I'm going to work up between, I want to say, 15 to 20 rounds of the granny square clusters, okay, in this hexagon pattern. 15 to 20 rounds and then when I'm done on the piece that will be the back panel maybe I could just show this to you I started crocheting again but basically I am only going to go up to like around here or so and then it'll stop the pieces in the back where the two sections will meet I'm going to make two rows on each side and then join them and then at the bottom of my cardigan, to make it longer, I'm going to make 10 rows. So I'm just going to go back and forth in granny stitches and I'll be, at that point, I'll be turning. So in some of these tutorials for the hexagon cardigans, people turn their work every row so that there's no front side and no back side. For me, I just want there to be a front side and a back side. So I just keep going in the in this pattern and I know that this is all the outside and this is all the inside and I'm fine with that but those 10 rows at the bottom will be one row will be facing forward then facing back and so on and so forth and that's totally fine and then of course at the end just the piece that's coming out I just have to stitch that here so I'm just going to crochet it um, in the ones that I made for my daughter's friends, I think I actually like cut the yarn, used a crochet needle and like did the stitching. But now the ones I made for her teachers, I was like, no, this has to be more sturdy. So I actually just like crocheted on top of it. I crocheted them together. So I did like slip stitches or whatever it was. And I crocheted them together because I'm like, this needs to hold up. Um, the other thing I hope I did with this one I can't even remember now but um I think for a hexagon cardigan it's useful to um not do a magic circle necessarily but to do this the slip the chains and then do the slip stitch to create a circle and I say that only because this can get a little bit heavy this one shouldn't because it's a light three weight, but the ones that I made in the mandala ombre, I felt like those could get a little heavy. So I wish I had just done the slip stitching, slip stitching, the, the, the chain stitches. Um, but yeah, you, you, you make and you learn, right? So you just keep learning and that's how this works. It's all a process of trial and error. And it's an experiment and every time you make something, you learn something new for next time. So, yeah, I am so glad I got this chance to spend time with you today and to work on my project. This project makes me so happy and I hope that you enjoyed whatever piece that you've been working on today with me. And I'm going to end the video here. So I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, I hope you have a wonderful crochetful day and I'll see you again soon.